Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new here. New studio, new lights, new camera, new action. No, it's not your camera. But uh, please smash the like button and subscribe. Today we have Wonder Woman 84 to review for you. I just saw the movie a couple of hours ago. Some parts were lit, some parts not so lit. Let's get into it. Let me start out by saying that Wonder Woman, the 2017 movie, is my favorite DCEU movie. Okay, let's get that out there. So starting out with the opening scene when Diana was a girl again back in Themyscira. It was like a triathlon setting or an event where they had to do kind of a triathlon. So they had to traverse all the territory of Themyscira. So they had to ride horses, swim, run, shoot arrows. And the shots they showed of that was amazing. It was like an Amazonian jungle in parts. Then you got the beach scene. Then you got yeah the, the water. And then you had them coming back uphill to the stadium. In the opening scene, you saw Diana fell off the horse in the event. So she wasn't able to hit her marker. And then she slid down a shortcut, regathered the horse, and then got back to the uh, the stadium. But Antiope saw that she cut the course, so as soon as she was about to lose her arrow and win the event, Antiope just grabbed her and said, "Nah, not today, girl. That's not how heroes win by cheating." And I think I think the line was something like, "Heroes aren't made by lying," something along those lines. So that was pretty cool to see those those shots of Themyscira was really nice. Moving on to today or 1984, where it was set. Well, she's at the Smithsonian this time, but she's like a, a, histor a history, historical artifacts curator, which, man, I just love that stuff with history and everything. So that's my favorite part of her character. And seeing her, and then you see Barbara's character, who's like, she's not really, not valued, yeah, not valued, not seen in a way she would want to be, like by anyone, not respected. That's kind of setting up her desires to become something more in like a villain aspect later on in the movie. So what happens is in the beginning you see there's like some kind of heist in a shopping mall. So some people are trying to take some historical artifacts and then they end up not getting away with it because Diana shows up, wrecks them. Pretty OP, pretty OP in the beginning. But then an artifact comes out, turns out it's like a monkey paw that you can make wishes. And when that wish comes true, you get what you wish for, but you lose something in return. So the best part about the movie though, for me, was when she got Steve back. Well, a, a version of Steve back. The interaction between her and Steve was just, that was what I loved in the first movie. And that's what makes this movie so, so great. But those parts alone don't really take it to that level of the original movie. The whole bit about him changing clothes about 50 fucking times. Like, yeah, okay, we get it. It's it's the 80s, man. He's wearing a bum bag. Get over it. But when she gets him, when she, oh, yeah. When when she first sees, well, Steve first sees her when he comes back. He, he says the line from um, the first movie when he says, I can save today, but you can save the world. Bruh, I lost it. And then at the end, she had to let him go to get her powers back. She loses her powers because she gets him back with her wish spoilers so with her getting steve back she loses some of her powers so you can see that during the movie when she starts to lose like her physical strength and then when she gets shot and cut you're like oh shit she's losing some power but one of my favorite parts was when they jumped in a plane once they got off the ground steve was like don't worry i'll f the way i fly they'll never find me and then dan is like oh yeah i forgot to tell you uh radar's a thing and he's like what so she ends up saying do you know how my dad hid Themyscira by uh, like making it invisible. And then she starts making this ball of like some invisibility. And she, she goes, I, I made a coffee mug invisible, but I never found it again. <laughs> and that was a funny line. And then she makes the the plane invisible. And I was like, oh, that's, that's pretty cool uh, powers to have like going forward. The most touching moment was like when she had to let Steve go and he said, yeah, well, he said something like, I've had the, I've lived my life, I had a great life because you were in it or something, man. And then she breaks down in that scene and it pretty much, and then fucking everyone else, well, I did almost. Man, that, that one hit home. And then she has to just leave him and run, and run off to try and save the world, of course, because it's her fucking movie. Why wouldn't she save the world? So she runs off and he says, uh, you can hear him say in the background, but not seeing him, he's like, I love you no matter where I, where I am. Now, let's go on to Maxwell Lord, the, the, I guess the main villain of the movie. So he was 
scheming to get the the stone it was an historical artifact that had been around through history historical periods throughout all history and then whenever it showed up it destroyed that civilization he'd been looking for this for a long time and then he finally saw it on barbara's desk and then he took it and then he the one wish he, he wished for was to become the, the stone so now he's the dream oh no the dream the the fuck is it he's a he's the wishing stone or whatever so now any any wish that goes through him he grants and then takes away something else from the the person who wished it the only thing that they said would have been trump like would have been when he said he's the businessman and a tv personality i was like okay that's about it and maybe maybe a hair a bit but there wasn't too much really from for me that i saw but you did see like a normal villain type like him getting worse and worse and worse and then when his kid like takes away his goodness i think with his wish i was like well okay so he needs to go full on bad now and then he just kind of wanted to take over the world through like everyone's wishes it was really weird and then everyone realized at the end was like uh no nah, i don't really want that because diana showed showed them that he was full of shit or well, something the other part i loved about when they were trying to find out what this stone thing was was when they went to the guy who was mayan apparently or his great grandfather was mayan she opened up a book that was had maya maya glyphs and writing and she was reading it and i was like oh man i love this i love seeing all this historical like ancient writing and text and seeing all this stuff and that was one of my favorite parts i'd love to see more of that like in like an indiana jones wonder woman style her just going through like historical time periods finding out all this sh cool shit about history and artifacts that'd be, i'd love that but maybe next one if they do one the whole thing with the cgi with cheetah with the promos it didn't look like she was ready or it had been it, it, she just didn't look good at all like with the touch-ups with the, the images that we saw or the stills or the even the footage we saw in the previews she just didn't look ready but in the movie it actually looked like defined lines on the face you could see and it looked like the hair was fine it looked it looked touched up and it looked fine there wasn't really anything too wrong with that uh in regards to the story nothing like the first one the, as i said the best parts were between her and steve and like that interaction and that connection that was probably the most powerful bit i think they could have done a bit better with what they had like some gods historical artifact could have done a bit more with it even though they launched all the nukes at the end he's just like yeah no my kid uh, my kid matters more so yeah no that's it i'm good i'm out i rescind my what do you say he say i relinquish my wish or something like that i rescind my wish so i think the difference between having zach even though he was named as uh, credited as producer I think he had less of a role in this movie than he did in the first one because this one seemed like it was a bit more out there. The shots that were the best that we saw in the ads and promos were the best shots we got in the movie basically bar the very beginning of Themyscira. But like when she's flying on the lightning, when she's whipping around the, the lasso of truth, when the kick through the door and went to the fight with Cheetah, like all these promo shots were pretty much the best shots they had to give us. And there wasn't really that much other action in the movie. It was disappointing. I think Patty let it go away from Zack's grounding. Maybe that's the way you can put it. Zack's grounding of the character. Let it go a bit out there. I don't know. That's just me. Probably the best score was... So the final interaction between Diana and Lord. When he's looking... I think it was he's looking up and the camera's down. But it's like the opposite shot of bbs in the beginning when he when bruce gets lifted up by the bats and he says in a dream they took me to the light it's like the opposite one's looking down one's looking up and it's the exact same music from bbs and i loved when that music came on but man if it was a better like climactic moment it would have been so much a bigger payoff but the music was so great i love that music oh post credit scene big spoilers original wonder woman linda carter shows up as the character who had the original gold costume or the original gold uh, armor asteria she was in this movie for a little bit she was the one that helped the themiscurians or the amazonians get away to themiscura from men and she, as she defended them by standing there getting beaten up by them 
with her golden armor. Okay. And then she comes back in the post credit scene just by stopping like some falling log on a kid. And she's like, eh, it was nothing. It was just like momentum. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty cool to see Linda Carter. Okay, in regards to box office numbers that I've heard a lot of outlets say that was it's being it's been pretty trash. Well, you can understand why. Okay, well China it's been showing that it's tracking half the amount of what Wonder Woman 2017 was. It hasn't even released yet worldwide officially. That's Christmas Day, which is for me tomorrow, which is in a couple of days for the US. And then you gotta think about UK just went into another full on lockdown, well most of the UK, so I don't know how many theaters open, there's not many open over there in the UK, so they're losing a whole market in the, in the UK. Then you've got to think about how many other places are locked down at the moment. And then you look at Australia, where I went, both sessions that I had in my cinema were sold out. And that's COVID sold out because if you buy a seat in these cinemas now, they reserve a seat around you. So it's like a bubble. So the whole cinema is not full, but it's full to its capacity that they can have. So we can see going forward, maybe the opening weekend here in Australia might be pretty decent. But I know Australia is not the biggest market, but still. And we'll see what happens with the numbers. I don't know if they'll give us the numbers from the uh, HBO Max as opposed to when you get it from the box office because it's being released on HBO Max and theaters in the US. So we'll see what happens there. But overall, nowhere near as good as the first movie. A lot less action than what would have wanted. Story was pretty surface level. Best moments were her and Steve. So what did you think of this movie? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share this one around. I'll see you on the next one.